Good afternoon, everyone. I am excited for what the Lord has for you today. He is going to continue to encourage you in the truth of His Word so that you deal with your stress and anxiety. And now we're going to look at areas of rejection and where rejection tries to take root in our soul. And God is going to expose that rejection and it is going to get uprooted in Jesus' name. Hey, Sherry Stedham, only two more days, friend. Oh, my goodness. I am super excited. I see you, Sue Gailey. God bless you. Hey, Dakota, God bless you. It is going to be an awesome day. We are going to be encouraged in the Lord. Hey, Terry Jackson, I love you. We are going to be encouraged in the Lord so much. And there's Stephanie. Oh, my goodness. Stephanie, I'll see you in a couple of days. And I see Angela. God bless you all. Thank you for joining in. And, we're, and there's Roger. Hey, Roger. God bless you. I see Linda Thorne. So good to see you. It is going to be an awesome day for you, Linda. Hey, Vita. So awesome to see you on here. And we're going to have an awesome day as God takes us deeper in the Word and He brings us understanding. Amen. Faith comes by hearing the Word. And that word faith, as you know, I'm going to continually repeat it over and over again. That word faith comes by understanding. That word faith, as we look at faith, is the Greek word pistis, and it means persuasion. And as we look at the persuasion of God's word in us, I see you, Chuck Ellis. God bless you. Thank you for being on here. I'll see you in a couple of days. I see Roseanne. So good to see you. I see you, Lindy. God bless you. So awesome to have you on here. I see you, Eva and Dietrich. God bless you. And that word hearing in Greek actually means understanding. I see you, Dina. God bless you. So faith comes by understanding the word. Amen. So we're going to get in deeper today in Psalm 46 as God continues taking us on this journey to remove areas of rejection, to also expose areas of stress where the enemy has operated against our soul and God brings the power of his word like a surgeon's scalpel and it operates on our soul and it removes the attacks of the enemy. Amen. I see you, Harry. Thank you for joining in. Anna, God bless you. I see you, Janet. Thank you for being here. And I see one more person. Who is it? Nancy. God bless you. So let us get started today. Amen. I'm going to pray. And we're just going to enter this word in such a hope and expectation. Amen. Father God, I thank you for the power of your word that yields a hundredfold standing grain harvest. That as you sow your seed of truth today by your word and the anointing of Holy Spirit, that you will bring understanding to our hearts and our minds, Father God, as you cause us to be lifted up in your anointing of grace, in your strength, God. And as we are here today, Father, that you will feed us in the strength of your name, in Jesus' name. So, God, we say, open up the eyes of our heart and flood it with the light of your truth to bring understanding. And, God, give us wisdom and knowledge as we listen to your truth, Father, to bring us revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's get started today. We're going to be looking at Psalm 46, and we're going to start finishing it. God started out with Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3, showing us the stress response. Hey, Shelba, so good to see you. And then God brought in 4 and 5, verses 4 and 5 of Psalm 46, and showed us that perfect rest that God has brought us into. Hey, Miss Sheila, so good to see you on here. I love you. That perfect rest that God has brought us into. And I love to pray continually over myself and others that God's perfect peace surpasses my understanding. God's perfect peace rules my heart and that is what Psalm 46 verses 4 and 5 represent. It represents the peace of God flooding your heart. So let's look at Psalm 45 verses 4 and 5. And then we'll get further into this text. 
Verse 4 of Psalm 46. I said verse four, Psalm 45. The reason I keep saying Psalm 45 is because it is like my favorite psalm that there is. If there is a favorite psalm and I can only pick one psalm out of the entire book of Psalms, it would always be Psalm 45 every time. Oh my goodness. There's going to be a book and actually Psalm 45 is actually in the new book coming out, I pray, in December which is Destiny, the last book of the Glory to Glory Sisterhood series, Destiny, A Time of Greatness. And oh my goodness, you're going to see Psalm 45 as never before when you read that book. But today we're looking at Psalm 46. So let's look at verses 4 and 5 in Psalm 46. Verse 4, There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her right early at the dawn of the morning. Now God showed us with those particular verses of how God's peace comes in. As we look at the streams in Psalm 46 verse 4. And if you have not heard that teaching, I'm not going to take up this time for that particular teaching, but go back in my videos, in the recordings, and see that particular teaching on Psalm 46, verses 4 and 5. I'm going to try to make sure I label all my teachings. So if they are not labeled, just be patient. I will have them labeled. And they will always be labeled with scripture because it is always about the word. It will always be about the word. And so when you see particular recordings that I'm doing on teachings, it's going to have the scriptures. So go back and look for Psalm 46, scriptures 4 and 5, and you will understand that peace of God that comes from the Holy Spirit and brings us an undisturbed peace that is not of this earth, but that is from above. And that peace, which surpasses our understanding, causes a joyful noise to come out of our soul, hallelujah, with an attitude of gratitude, a heart of gratefulness, in order to remove hindrances out of our soul so that we are able to perceive the destiny that God has for us. Amen. God reveals his destiny to the grateful heart. And the enemy knows this, and this is why the enemy is trying to wear you out. He is trying to attack you left and right, and to wear you out through, distra through distractions of this present age that have nothing to do with the call of God on your life. And when God exposes these attacks, he expects us to obey and to cut that off and to simply walk in what he has called us to do. So how does this look like? It looks like you might have to end some relationships. Now do not throw the baby out with the bathwater and think, I am telling you to leave your spouse. I am not saying that. And please do not take it to the marriage issue, okay? I am talking about friendships, relationships, relationships at work, relationships in ministry, relationships with friends that are not good for you, but that actually are hindering you from entering into the call of Christ Jesus. I remember when God showed me this in 2008, and I had written the Glory to Glory Sisterhood series and what I thought was one book that I wrote in six months in 2004 actually was four books, and that is where we get the Glory to Glory Sisterhood series. But of course, the last book at his feet was brand new material, and I basically just scratched the old book and didn't even use it. And I'm going to be using some of the stuff from that 2004 book of Destiny. I am going to be using a little bit of that. But God is just going to be adding so much more larger portion. Because where I am today, 13 years later from 2004, is light years in Revelation compared to the Revelation that I had in 2004. And likewise, when we enter the call in order for us to obtain that promotion God expects us to be obedient, and when he says to cut off a relationship or to stop going somewhere to fellowship, do it, and don't continue, because if you continue, then you are in blatant disobedience. And a good example I can give you 
just to show you about how promotion comes from the Lord. I totally believe that promotion always comes from the Lord. The Lord will not let me promote myself. He will not let me call people and tell them, Hey, why don't you have me to speak? That is not God. God promotes you. Promotion comes from the Lord. And God showed me a long time ago that He will never promote anything unless He knows that He has absolute control over it. And the example He gave me was our ministry. And God said, Robin, I will never promote you in ministry if I know the devil can control you. Amen, Sherry said, um, if I know the devil can control you. And I said, God, what do you mean? He said, you want to get into the anointing that I have for your life. And I said, yes, God. And this was in 2008. And I'll just give you a small testimony because God wants me to share this with you. And these are my pearls, okay? These are my pearls. So I just pray that you treat these as treasures, as they are to me, as God has me give them to you. And so in 2007, I found myself getting agitated being around a specific female that was in my life for a few years. And I found myself in 2008 getting even more agitated when I thought of her, when she called me, when I thought about seeing her, which was frequently because I was involved in ministry work with her, and I actually helped her in her ministry. And so I found myself irritated and agitated at times, and I started wondering, hey, do I need deliverance? God, forgive me. I've got a horrible heart. I need deliverance from anger. I need deliverance from this agitation. And then God began to speak to me, and he said, no, Robin, this is not an area that you need to be delivered from where you have a negative attitude, where you have a bad perception, where the enemy has taken advantage of that, God said, no, grace has lifted, and I want you to move out from that place and to cut that relationship off because that relationship is keeping you small. And I remember hearing words that were prophesied over me and words that were spoken right before I cut that relationship off, and all of a sudden, it was like God popped my ears, and I could like super hear. I'm only describing it the way that I can describe it. And as people were prophesying just awesome words over me about my destiny, this woman came behind them and said, no, it's too soon. She doesn't need to go out yet. It is too soon, and started misinterpreting the prophetic word that was to edify me. And instead of edifying me, every prophetic word in those last couple of years was to tear me down and to keep me small. And God popped my ears open and I heard it. He said, Robin, do you hear it? And I heard the words that were constantly spoken over me. Little Robin, little Robin, little Robin, little Robin. And God said, Robin, get away from her because you are not little. You are not little. You are anointed. And until I cut that relationship off, I could not go into the call to the next measure that God had for me. So God opened my eyes and I obeyed. And that is where the notes of the Jezebel spirit came. And I physically, now I grew up Southern Baptist. This all supernatural experience starting Resurrection Sunday of 2002 where I was delivered from alcohol. All of this supernatural experience was totally new to me. It's like I was literally feeling things. And when I made the decision to cut that relationship off, it felt as though, and I can only describe it to you with words and understanding that I have in my mind in order to relate it to you, and I've got it in my Jezebel notes, but literally, it felt as though my back, back here, opened up this wide it just felt like that that is all i can describe it to you and i just started doing my back like this because i felt like i was in an operation and that back in the middle was just cracked open where my spine was and then i felt three octopus tentacles in my spine and I, again please be patient with me because i am describing it to you as I have understanding about things that I know and how I have lived, okay? So when I am telling you octopus tentacles, I am telling you that's how it felt like. 
So you understand that it is my perception. Amen. So when I cut that relationship off, it was as though my back opened up like this wide. Now understand it really did not, but physically it felt like it was. And that is the best description I can tell you. And then I audibly heard three octopus tentacles come out of my spine and I felt them and I was flung forward as those things came out of my spine and I went, God, what was that? And he said, Robin, that was the Jezebel spirit that was sucking on the anointing in your life. Because before this, before I cut that relationship off, I found myself fatigued. My mind was constantly confused. I felt like a fog. I felt like I had dementia where I couldn't focus. I couldn't understand. And I had constant headaches. Oh my goodness. The headaches were so constant. But when I cut that relationship off, Holy Spirit flooded me right after those three octopus tentacles left my person in the spirit, okay? When it left my person, I was flooded with such strength from on high where I felt like I could run the Boston Marathon. I had so much strength. And it was that strength that Micah 5, 4 promises that Jesus feeds the flock of God in the strength of His name. Now understand that today's Facebook Live, today's video, is not happenstance. And so everything that is coming to you right now on this video is specifically for you. I stay studied up in the Word so much, but I lean entirely on Holy Spirit every time I minister, every time I teach, every time I preach, because it is the needed anointing for that time. It is the fresh manna that needs to be eaten for whoever is watching. So know that I did not contrive any of this and determine that I was going to speak on any of this before I got on. This is surprising me as much as it is surprising you that I am sharing these pearls with you because I consider these great pearls, the pearls a pearl of great price where I have sought God, cut relationships off, and God has moved me into the anointing. So when God moved me into the anointing, that is when I got my first book contract with Destiny Image. And God has taken me through other relationships where there was someone that came in with the spirit of divination very close to our very close to me in ministry. And God cut that off in 2012. And the reason that I can write about these spirits as Holy Spirit directs me from the Father is because I have been there, done that, have the t-shirt, and have overcome. Amen. And so God has me teach out of my life experience with the Word of God. And so God continually has opened my eyes with areas in my soul where the enemy had ungodly soul ties or relationships where he was trying to do like he's always done in the Garden of Eden. Just get all up in your garden. Or can we say your soul? Where he's trying to smooth talk you. And it sounds all good. And this person looks legitimate. And gets close to you. Let me tell you. It is imperative in this hour. That you know those who labor among you. That you know those that you let, let in your inner circle. Because you have to guard your heart. Why? Because the issue we're going to look at today in Psalm 46 is about rejection. And I'm telling you as I am standing here right now that there are areas of rejection that are in your soul that are operating and they're continued and allowed to operate because you have not obeyed God and cut some relationships off or you have not set up the appropriate boundaries. Now we know that we have to monitor our words. Not only our words, but we also have to consider our countenance. Do you know that whatever is on this part of your face is actually in your soul? So therefore, when we are staring at other people and we are looking at them, 
We not only send messages by the mouth that's on our face, but we also send messages with our stares, with our countenance, and this can actually be louder than words. So God strengthens us in order to resist the enemy, and as we resist him, he flees. Amen. And we are able to rise up in the anointing. What is interesting, I'm going to get out a mint right here so I can just uh, make my throat <clears throat> menthol in my throat so I can keep preaching, hallelujah, which is teaching and preaching. For those that are coming to Daphne this weekend, this anointing that Holy Spirit has for me has given me, especially will be on Friday night, you bring people that have issues with rejection, that have issues with depression and with suicide, and I am believing that God is going to set them free this Friday night in Daphne, Alabama. God has preached this message that I'm going to preach in Daphne, Alabama. He's preached it in Birmingham, and he's preached it in Winfield, and in both of those instances, he brought such an anointing to cast out devils and to heal and bind up the brokenhearted. So you come this Friday night to Daphne, Alabama, near Mobile, expecting not only for you, but your family. Amen. And not only that, Saturday, God has showed me that it is a watchman's anointing where he is going to send his watchman forth <clears throat> in Jesus' name. And we are going to be expected. Amen. So as we look at the assignment of rejection, we will find out that it is rejection that is hindering us. And why is it hindering us? Because we care more about the opinions of man. And when I say man, I don't mean men. I just mean others. As God uses the word man in scripture, he doesn't necessarily for every single scripture mean that it is the male gender, but also in different scriptures, when he says man, he also refers to mankind, which is humankind. Amen. So when I say man, know that I'm talking about mankind, humankind. So when we care more about the things of this present age, we're literally going to cling to the opinions of other people, of their words and their countenance. Now notice these two things, because it's not only their words that we're going to cling to want to know. You know, if somebody's talking about you, don't get to know what they're saying, <laughs> because by you even thinking that you want to know what other people say, is actually you caring about what other people say about you, which means you care about their opinions, which means you're opening yourself to rejection. Let me tell you, God always warns me in dreams. He gives me very detailed dreams, has been over many, many, many years, especially since 2002. Since 2002, when I got delivered from alcohol and God put me on the highway of holiness for me, Mark went into the call. I got hungry and thirsty in righteousness for the word and in prayer. I just started getting dreams that were absolutely crazy, where I would be in literal rooms in the future, and I would see things that would take place that would actually come to pass. And then I've been in occasions where I've been in literal meetings that were going on. I've even been in the White House Oval Office in a meeting, which God showed me the meeting, and I put out an alert. It was about four years ago to pray because there was going to be a devastation, an attempt in Florida, and that is when the shooting took place at Florida State, and God showed me that it was a false flag that was planned, and it was coming out of the Oval Office. He showed me the people in the Oval Office and then he showed me the meeting that was taking place. And it was a strategy set against Florida, which was to come after our Second Amendment, our right to bear arms. So I 
have many dreams with the Lord. I know you do too. But when he gives me dreams, he warns me of people that are talking are coming against me with an evil spirit that is of the enemy of death. And so he shows me the tongue of hell, that tongue of condemnation that is trying to scourge me and to flog me because I can feel it. I can be around people and I can just feel it coming off their person because it's not merely what's coming out of their mouth. It's what is in their heart. And what is in their heart is going to be seen on their face. And let me tell you, Holy Spirit will get all over that business in Jesus' name. Because when my, uh, uh, when my son had been bullied one time and I went, met, met, went to meet with the staff that had known him ever since he was two years old and now he was much older and he was in junior high, some of these staff members just spoke horrible things about his person, about him. And I got the word of God and I said, don't you say anything that is not in this word about my son. Because that is a lie in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, eyes started changing to where they looked like snake eyes. Literally, the color and the shape changed in front of my face. And then all of a sudden, one person's face started contorting like this without their hands on it. And it just started doing all kinds of contortions. And that twitching started going on. Why? Because truth had confronted their soul. And what was in their soul was no longer going to stay hidden. What was in their soul was exposed when the truth of God came upon them to declare to them that my face, my face is set like flint. My forehead, look at this forehead. Look at this forehead. It is set like flint, devil, in Jesus' name. You ain't going to reject me because I'm not rejected. You're not going to reject my son, and you're not going to reject me. And I'm going to take this diamond point forehead mark of God, and I'm going to cut you all up, devil, and expose the darkness to the light where you're not going to be hidden anymore, but your ugly nature your murderous words will be exposed to the light for your soul to know of the person that is bound up so that they can confess their sins before they meet God and not go to meet God with this in their heart. I have prayed for those who have gone into such great diligence at rejecting me and my son. And the reason I do is because I fear for them when they meet the Lord. Now, this is a continual thing we have to deal with daily. Where the enemy is trying to attack our mind. And he's trying to bring rejection against our soul through, again, I'm going to say it again, through two instruments, through shame and fear. Imagine shame as a vehicle like a car, and the driver of that car is actually fear. So when you have shame somewhere in your person, because the enemy is the accuser, he's trying to bring shame, he's trying to accuse you, and you just got to put your cough, which is K-A-P-H, the Hebrew letter K-A-P-H, and the Hebrew letter cough is actually the palm of the hand. And I just say, devil, I'm coughing. Woo! Hallelujah. Talk to the hand in Jesus' name. And that cough, K-A-P-H, the Hebrew symbol, which is the ancient symbol of a palm of a hand, it actually means covering. And so you let the devil know that God is your covering. God's banner of love, hallelujah, is your covering in Jesus' name. And so when the enemy comes in with rejection, you have to have your forehead set like flint, like Ezekiel, God is making your face strong because it is that strength as Micah 5, 4 represents where God's flock will be fed in the strength of His name. And when you are fed in His strength, hallelujah, no devil from the pit of hell can stop you from entering the call. 
as you are lifted up into the love of the Father in that anointing, hallelujah, knowing a greater strength, hallelujah. So let's look again at verse 6. Now, I went over verse 6 Monday. I'm just kind of surfacing, just giving a summary about what Monday was. And we're going to go further into Scripture in Psalm 46. So Psalm 46, verse 6, Scripture says, The nations raged, the kingdoms tottered and were moved. He uttered His voice, and the earth melted. Now God showed us on Monday's teaching, and again, I'm not going to get into it. Go back and watch it. It is absolutely amazing. God showed us that the nations represents that flesh nature, and that kingdoms represent the demonic assignments of the pit of hell by Satan to oppress you. So God exposes our flesh. He exposes the enemy. And we have a wrestling, hallelujah, by the power of having the knowledge of His glory represented in Genesis 32 when Jacob actually wrestled with an angel of the Lord. And when he wrestled with God, he was changed. And right now, you and I are wrestling with God. How? By knowing His Word. Where? In our circumstances. When we feel rejected. When we feel people are saying things about us. When we get stressed out because we're afraid about paying our bills. Or we get stressed out because we don't know how things are going to work out for our children, for our spouse, for our family. That is still an issue of rejection where you feel that as though God has rejected you. Now, you might not consciously be able to say, oh yeah, that's what it is. But subconsciously, it's still an area of rejection in your soul where you're hindered from trusting God even more. How exciting would it be if you had such a leaning upon God that you had no doubt you would never waver, you would never be scared, you would never be questioning, you would just have this firm confidence. There are some people that are very few that are there, but most of us, we are in this place where God is just taking us from glory to glory as we come to know the knowledge of His glory through our trial. That is 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 of the refining of our faith. So let's look now at verse 7. Verse 7 says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, our fortress and high tower. Selah, pause, and calmly think of that. Now let's look at verse 7 because this is absolutely mind-blowing. God shows us that verse one, verses 1 through 3 is preparing us for the stress response. Verse 1, God is our strong tower in the time of trouble. Verse 2, that there's going to be stress in this age. And we have to be anchored in God so that that stress of this present age doesn't crowd us. And what does God do? He brings streams from His river, that river of life that bring abundant peace that make us glad. And in that rest, God shows us in the next verse, in verse 6, how our flesh nature becomes crucified and how the demonic assaults of Satan are uprooted, torn down, and destroyed. And that verse 6 is actually... The rejection issue. That is in our soul. So God brings an anointing by His Word in your trial to expose areas of rejection so that He can uproot it, tear it down, and destroy. And now we see in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So let's look at this and let's get more understanding. When we're talking about the Lord of hosts, 
It is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. When we're talking about the Lord of hosts, it is Psalm 24. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, that is not lifted up his heart to an idol, nor sworn by his lips anything false. This is the generation of those that seek him, who seek his face. And unto this generation, he will reward them with righteousness from the Lord God of their salvation. Open up, you ancient gates. Be ye opened up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty in battle, that He, woo, hallelujah, is going to come forth. So when you see the Lord of hosts in Scripture, it is always, and we get into it more in book 9 in God's Bible School of the Prophets, as we also look at the Spirit of the Lord, that is session on the Spirit of the Lord. When you see the Lord of hosts in Scripture, one of the particular and main primary anointings for the Lord of hosts is the message. It will always be about the message because there is power. Amen. There is power in the message of God. That message is so powerful that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon that message. And what does that do in Isaiah 61? It is the day of vengeance of our God. It is the day of the Lord where he binds up the brokenhearted, where he opens up dungeons of captivity and sets the captives free, where he lifts off cloaks of heaviness and he brings a garment of expressive praise. Amen. He causes the preaching of his message to go forth and that message does exactly what God sent it to do. A great demonstration of this is the day of Pentecost. Acts 2, that is a great demonstration of the particular anointing of the Spirit of the Lord that has the Lord of hosts operating in the midst of the people that are hearing that message. So when we see Psalm 46 verse 7, and all of a sudden, we go from nations raging and going crazy, and then kingdoms being moved, and kingdoms shaking. All of a sudden, God's voice comes, speaks peace, and then the Lord of hosts is made known to the soul. The Lord strong in battle. Woo! Hallelujah. Now that is some strength when you're talking about the Lord strong in battle, the Lord of hosts. Amen. And so here, let's look particularly at this Hebrew word and let's get a Hebrew word picture to provide greater understanding, increasing our faith. So this Hebrew word is sabah. And it's actually, uh, it actually comes from another word, which we'll get to in a minute. It means a mass of persons. It means uh, appointed time, battle, company, host, service, soldiers, waiting upon, and warfare. Woo! Hallelujah! How many of you know that the battle is the Lord's? You just have to be still and wait on God and know that the Lord of hosts is going to show up to set you free. To come and battle on your behalf. Amen. So let's look at these words one more time. For this particular Hebrew word, Sabal, which is host. We're talking about the Lord of hosts. It is a mass of persons. It means organized for war. It means a campaign. It means appointed time, battle, company, host, service, soldiers, waiting upon, and warfare. Woo! Hallelujah. Now, are you ready for the word picture? Oh my goodness, I am getting blessed by Holy Spirit just looking at these Hebrew letters. Because we're taking the ancient Hebrew Olifet that was pre-Canaanite that looked like caveman language. That's the best description I can give you. And it's ancient 
caveman looking pictures. The interesting thing is if you Google the original Torah, you can see the ancient Hebrew olive bed that was pre-Canaanite. And when you put those particular symbols together of each letter having a symbol, it forms what is known as a word picture. And it provides deeper understanding. Amen. So let's look at these three Hebrew letters for hosts. The Lord of hosts. Sabah. Woo. Hallelujah. The three letters are Sade, Bet, and Alif. So Sade is T-S-A-D-E. And it actually is the agency of a fish hook. And it means to catch. It means caught. It means need. It also indicates desire. And then you have Bet, B-E-T. It's an ancient symbol of a tent. And it means tent. It means house. It means household and family. And finally, we have Aleph, A-L-E-P-H. It's where we get our A from. It's where the Greeks get their alpha from. So Aleph is the ancient symbol of an ox. And it means strength, beginning, and thirst. So are you ready for the word picture for host the Lord Sabah? This word picture is being caught in your house with strength that comes to you from the beginning. Woo! Hallelujah. Or can we say the strength of eternity? Hallelujah. I love how Jesus told his disciples. He said, you are those who have been with me from the beginning. And all I could conceive is how they had a supernatural strength, the Holy Spirit, because they had a greater understanding from the parables that became a mirror of the Word, reflecting deep mysteries of that Word, hallelujah, to give them not only a strength that they could comprehend in the present, but a strength from eternity that was given to their heart, to their mind, that would cause them to be lifted up in a greater confidence that when they went out to take the message from the Lord of hosts, woo, hallelujah, that when they went out to take that message, that that message, hallelujah, was going to be a fishing pole. Woo! Here's my fishing pole today. Was going to be a fishing pole, hallelujah, to catch those fish. Woo! Do you know if you have been caught by the desire of God and He has provided to you a strength in His name, in His name, you are going to go fishing as you give that strength out to other people because you carry that message. So let's end today as we look at Psalm 46. We're going to also end with Micah 5, 4. Again, Psalm 46, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is when a revelation comes to the soul that they are not rejected. That the very God of Jacob is their refuge. And that wrestling that Jacob endured, hallelujah, that we are going to be able to endure. And we are not going to be afraid of Esau's face, his ugly face. Woo! Hallelujah. We are going to go into our call with so much love that we are overflowing. Hallelujah. That our forehead is like flint. Our faces are strong. And we can enter the call in Jesus' name. So let's look here at Micah 5. Now this particular scripture. Are you leaving, baby? Yes. Okay, bye. This particular scripture is one of my very core scriptures. When I say core scriptures, you're always going to see 1 Corinthians 2, John 1, 1 through 5. The entire chapter of 1 Corinthians 2, you're going to see Micah 5, you're going to see Micah 4, you're going to see the entire book of Song of Solomon, you're going to see Ephesians 1, 17 through 23, Ephesians 3, 16 through 21, you're going to see Isaiah 9, you're going to see Isaiah 11. These are like core scriptures. You're going to see Mark 4, the core parable. 
These are core scriptures that God is always having me pull into almost all of my teachings. So this, Micah 5, 4, get it in your knower, amen, because it will change your life. Micah 5, 4, this is the prophecy of Messiah. And he, who is he? Jesus, Messiah. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord. In the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure. For then shall he be great to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Micah 5, 4 resembles this immeasurable strength that you and I have given to us daily by Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit has an unending supply. We just have to keep asking. We just have to keep seeking. And we just have to keep knocking. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And why do we do that? Because we need it. Because of our need. Because you only get Holy Spirit according to Luke 11. Which is another core scripture. Luke 11. The entire chapter. Because you only get Holy Spirit when you have a need. When you know your need. Let me clarify that. When you are aware of your need. And that desperation presses you into God. And you draw near to Him. And He draws near to you. And He gives more of Holy Spirit. Amen. So in this hour, know that God is moving you in the right direction. Know that you're not losing your mind. That you probably feel areas of rejection or areas where you feel like, I just don't know what's wrong with me. What has come over me? Even if you're discouraged, even if you have signs of depression, or if you have thoughts that are suicidal, which we know are the pit of hell, right? It is not God. That is a pit of hell. And we send those messages to the wilderness in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind and the helmet of salvation, the mind of Christ Jesus in Jesus' name. But any of those thoughts are symptoms of rejection. So what does that mean? That means you need to press in to Psalm 46 and know that God is your refuge. Take every thought captive, bring it down to the abyss of Christ Jesus, which also puts a requirement on you that you cut off relationships which God has asked you to and told you probably many times, I've been there, to cut off in order for you to move into his plans. Because if you don't, rejection will control you on every turn. Because why? You have not obeyed. And you have an open door, open access, where that spirit has access to you. And it is manipulating and controlling you. And hindering you from seeing the door that God has for you to walk in. So let's pray. Hallelujah. God, I pray over those watching that they have the mind of Christ Jesus. That mind, hallelujah, that has the very thoughts and intentions of the Father's heart that is able to perceive through purity, holiness, righteousness, woo, hallelujah, the very presence of your glory, God, hallelujah. That you enter into our lives in a greater measure by opening the eyes of our heart, giving us knowledge, giving us wisdom, and causing us to know resurrection power. Where we are lifted up high as we are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places to know your strength. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And that God, that strength is supplied to us and feeds us daily through your word so that you, Father God, your name is glorified in Jesus' name. God bless you, and I will see you, hopefully, some of you, in Daphne, Alabama this weekend. If not, I will see you next, uh, next Wednesday because I will not be coming back from the South Alabama area until Monday. So I will not do Facebook Live until next Wednesday. So I will be off for a week. 
But I will try to come on here if God provides the opportunity. But in the meantime, be praying as I finish this book, The Spirit of Knowledge, because I am so close to finishing, but I want it absolutely perfect to have everything God has in it. And in chapter 5 of The Spirit of Knowledge, we are actually doing the whole generality of the brain, and God is going to bring in the anxiety and fear response. So we look at stress response in chapter 4, but we look at rejection caused by anxiety, causing anxiety and fear in chapter 5. And oh my goodness, the scriptures that God has given me that actually show you the blueprint of that part of our brain is blowing my mind. God showed me today in scriptures where it is, and it is the blueprint of our brain and how it functions. Oh, I cannot wait for you to read this. And I thank you for your prayers. Thank you, Eva. God bless you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you all for praying for me. And I pray for y'all daily. Hey, Lisa, so good to see you on here. I pray for you all daily and know that God is going to work everything to your good. In Jesus' name, God bless you.